Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. You know, fear can get the best of us. And sometimes, if we're not careful, it can also overwhelm us. Today, you'll see an incredible story of two parents who wouldn't let fear get in the way of their faith, even as their 16-month-old daughter clung to life. You'll see how their prayers set the stage for a miracle. On the flip side, you'll also see how panic attacks are becoming more and more common. And we have some ways for you to avoid them. But first, I'm going to be joined by author and speaker Lloyd Hartshorn to discuss the topic of fear and get some practical advice for overcoming it. Stay with us. And welcome to the 700 Club Canada, Lori Hartshorn, author, speaker, and our friend. So good to see you, Lori. Thank you, Brian. You know, I am so thrilled about what God is doing inside of your life. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of new things taking place, yeah, too. Right. If you're talking about Do It Afraid, which, right. is, which is a series you're focusing yeah. on, there's, there's also some things like grandbabies coming yes, in. Yes, I love it. I'm it, a grandma now. And it's coming again, too, in, the first, in this year. So it's awesome. I know. You look too it's young to be. A grand oh, that's a good line. Good line. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when we look at where we are, uh, especially um, the Canadian church and in, in this mm. 21st century, uh, unbelief is a oh. big thing. Oh, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I'm talking Western culture. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so when you uh, are, are focusing on uh, fear, mm -hmm. and we're talking about crippling fear, yeah. things that can cause yeah. you to. Uh, to paralyze you from doing the things that you're called to do. Right, right. Um, what inspired you to start dealing with this? Well, you know what? I'm in my first series, Finding Freedom. I'm talking yeah. about spiritual warfare and yeah. the power of prayer, and I'm literally taping the first se section, right? Yes. And it's not even in my notes. Of course, that's the Holy Spirit, right? You've yeah. you've prepared, yes. And then He tells you what to say. And <laughs> literally, I just stepped away from the pulpit and I just gave this word: "Do it afraid." Yeah. Like, step. Put your I did say hairy toe in the water. Now, hopefully yeah. your toes aren't hairy, but you know. Well, I, I got uh, a little fuzz on You know, toe, if yeah. they are, put <laughs> yeah. your toe in the water. Yes. Step into the things that God has called Come you to on. do. Because fear is so crippling, as you say. It's a thing that holds yeah. us back, that limits us, that, and the enemy just reminds us and repeats, you know, yes. that and repetition, yes. that tape in our head. Mm -hmm. Insecurity or doubts yes. or whatever. I'm not qualified, Negative whatever. Yeah. Right, whatever the, the the root of that fear is mm -hmm. holds us back and then we don't walk in our true identity. We don't find our action, we don't work out our God's already ordained purpose for our life. And he, and he does say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes, and it, it's moving from fear to faith. So do it yes. afraid was like, actually, that's the beginning step. Yes. Because fear is normal. Mm -hmm. In fact, look in the scripture. Every time God told someone to do something, mm. who showed up at angels and what did they say? Yes, fear not. Right. That's right. Because he knew they were afraid. Yes. Right? It's yes. like he, God knows we're afraid, yes. but we can't stay there. We have to do it, we have to step through our fear yes. and into faith. Well, you know, and, and, and I think that's really why I really appreciate when you're saying, it doesn't mean don't do it. It just right. says step into it, yes. even if you are afraid. Right, and, right. And move along. And it actually, the, the fear, you know, one baby step at a time. Yes. Right? Yes. That step of obedience. What did he tell you today? Mm -hmm. what did, and, and it can be as simple, I tell people, it's as simple as, it's kind of, in the same way, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit and obey the prompting, just obey the prompting, do the thing he told you to do. Whether it's as simple as make the phone call. Yes. God prompted you, speak to the person. Yeah. Right? Do it afraid, afraid. move in, yeah. and then that fe the fe fear is gone and faith takes over yeah. and you find yourself on the other side of fear. Yeah. And then on the other side, that's where God plants most of the blessings yes. because if we would see the blessing on this side we would yeah. never go beyond that yeah, yeah. now now men and women of faith how are we to practically begin to walk this out well i, I think it's one step at a time mm -hmm. i don't know anyone even in scripture that was 
all, you know, all mm -hmm. in. I mean, look at the failures of Peter. Look at, you know, his, his own self-doubt yes. and questioning. And then yes. Jesus said, I'm actually going to, you know, you're going to build my church. Like, I'm going to, you're going to be the cornerstone here. This is where it's all going to start, Peter. Yes. You say things wrong. You do, like, he was afraid to even identify himself as a friend of Jesus. Well, you know, you know? And, and, and that fear yeah. was the thing that almost disqualified it. Almost did. Without the prayer of Jesus. Right. Because right. he says, Satan has desired to yes. sift you like wheat, but I have prayed. Right? right, right. You know, I'm so excited because you're going to be guest hosting with us yeah, in this entire fun. month and as That's we're great. moving along. And I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled about it because I know that uh, you are no stranger to the 700 Club Canada. But uh, I believe because of the conference speaking that you're doing, because of the small groups, and as you're working in a local church, you're a mm -hmm. practitioner that yeah. are right on the ground That's with this, right? right? Yeah. Now, Lori, when, when you travel across the country, yeah. you get an opportunity to see uh, some areas of fear, some oh. practical areas yeah. that people are battling with yeah. and, uh, and and how to give them the tools to walk through mm -hmm. that. What, what have you seen and what do you... Well, I would definitely say, I mean, we said it, like this insecurity, this self-doubt, this negative self-talk, mm -hmm. which is actually not the place in a believer's life. Okay. We are new creations in Christ and the Amen. old is gone. And we have to learn and I'm, I just feel the call of God as an ambassador of Jesus, which we all are. Yes. Like remind people of who they really are in Christ. Yeah. When you understand your true identity, when you understand that you're forgiven and you're loved and you're given the righteousness of Christ, you can stand before God and it, mm. it, in Jesus' mm. clothes, not your own, yes. you know, in his righteousness that this is beyond any human person, this identity and know who you really are. Yeah. And that enables you to say yes to the things that God has already lined up for you. Yes. You have to make agreements with God's way and not the enemy's way and become alert to that. You know, right? it, it, that is so good because so often what we do is we struggle with the paralysis of analysis. Oh, my goodness, And we goodness, think that we yes. have to know the end of the road right. instead of just the next step. Right. We love to plan. Yes. And the Spirit loves to prompt. Yes. Now... Come on. Prompting, planning. It's good. It, we have a, you know, our church has a rhythm of prompting, planning. Prom yes. But listen, it's the prompting and you move with the prompting yeah. and get over your own planning because often, yeah. don't you know it to be true? Yeah. You think it's going to look like this? And he says, well, actually, yeah. I'm, it's going to look like this. Yes. And, and just the thrill of the ride. Yes. Like I talk about do it afraid, moving through fear into an adventurous life of faith. Yes. It gets adventurous. It's fun. Yes. It's fun to live by faith and go, I don't actually have to have it all figured out, right? But what really holds that back? Is it because of our negative experiences of our past that sure. cause and yeah. paint and yeah. filter and what we're going to go into? I think our need to control. Ah. I mean, come on. Is it not? Are Everybody we not... right there just belched and said. Yeah, <clears throat> right? Like, get over ourselves. Yeah. We love to be independent. Yeah. And it's pride, at the root of pride, we yeah. want to be in control, we want to be in charge, we want to be independent, and actually the whole Christian life yeah. is actually none of that. Mm -hmm. It's about humility, yes. it's about actually dependence on the yes. Spirit, yes. it's actually about walking in step with the Spirit, yeah. and that requires us to lay down our own agenda and our own idea of things, and that fix I need to fix things, I need to control things, yeah. I need to be in charge, whether it's fixing someone else. Yes. Uh oh How much energy do we spend on the people being the problem in our life and we're all wrapped up in all the problems and the and God says, Really? Can yes. you just get out of the way? Like in our family story, I yes. mean I've told it a time or two, but please Lord, get out of the way so I can actually Deal with this. You know what, and, right? and I think that's an important point. I deal with it because I think men and women deal with fear, false evidence appearing real True. in different ways. True. Right? How do men deal with it, Brian? Well, I, I think, think a lot of times a... men deal with it uh, with, uh, I'm just going to be, uh, you mm. know, the stoic type. Right. Or, you right. know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it when yeah. really they're like a, di uh, a duck on a, an angry sea paddling for mm. dear life, wondering when am I going to get through and how right, am I going right, to go right, through it, right, right? right? So they become a little bit pensive. Yeah. And I think sometimes, yeah. how do women deal with it? Well, we're generalizing, but I think you're right in yep. that men can kind of get, you know, I'm just going to keep it to myself yep. and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to share yes. and care. I, I, you know, and, but the women, I think we're more sharers, yes. right? And we, we have a tendency to sort of dive in, yes. right? Yes. Maybe it's fight or flight, but some, women have a tendency just like, 
okay, I'm yeah. gonna get in on this thing and let me take charge and let yeah. me, you know, so maybe there's just, I, my husband and I have learned sort of that dance of, you know, yes. how we both deal with fear differently. Mm -hmm. But I think at the root of both of those responses, whether it's kind of fight or flight, yes. there's still a pride issue. It is. And we've just got to lay down our pride. Yeah. And when we do and we come approach things with humility and actually surrendering this to God, which it doesn't just instantly happen. It's sort of a practice, yeah. right? A yes. discipline, yes. Yes. a spiritual yes. discipline, actually. Um, then we become better at it. Mm. And, you know, well, letting God do what only God can do. Well, we're going to talk more about this. And yeah. you're going to be with us and sharing. And I know you're going to love it. Uh, Lori Hartshorn, not only author, speaker, but... Uh, she is truly an amazing gift, and she's here with us all month with the 700 Club. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Yeah. Well, up next, a mother finds her toddler floating in a neighbor's pool and prays for a miracle to bring her daughter back. Take a look. Nora Lenny vividly remembers the morning of August 19th, 2016. I noticed that it had gone quiet. When it goes quiet and you have a toddler in the house, something's not right. She was going through her morning routine while her husband Patrick was meeting with a handyman. Then, Nora realized her 16-month-old daughter, Ariella, was nowhere to be found. Just ran around looking for her, calling her name, didn't hear her, didn't see her. Ariella had found an open door and wandered into the backyard alone. After 10 minutes of searching, Nora discovered her floating in the family's pool. I just grabbed her out of the pool, ran inside with her. She's limp, her lips are blue. She's just dangling in my arms. I'm just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Out front, Patrick heard the screams and ran into the house. He found Nora performing CPR on Ariella and called 911. It was just desperation. Lord, heal my daughter. You know, she's dying. I was praying. I was definitely scared. And I, I guess in my mind, I was kind of praying, just saying, Lord Jesus, please let her be OK. Paramedics arrived and had to shock Ariella three times to get a steady pulse. They rushed her to Galasano Children's Hospital in Rochester, New York. She was under 10 minutes, so she was not getting any oxygen for 10 minutes. And your organs, your brain, your heart, they just don't make it. And I've seen children that have been underwater for less than that and have not made it. Veteran pediatric nurse Jill Hartland was on duty in the ER when Ariella arrived. She was not alert. She was not mentating. She wasn't tracking or looking around. Her pupils were fixed and dilated, which tells me that there's increased swelling like in the brain. I was actually told by the doctor, she's probably not gonna live. And if she does live, that she won't be able to walk on her own. She won't be able to feed herself. You know, she's not gonna be the child that you know her today. I looked at the doctor and I just told her, I'm sorry, cannot accept that. It was something that I felt within me that the Holy Spirit was saying to me, this is not the way it's going to end. Doctors put Ariella into a coma to slow the brain swelling and calm her seizures. The first 72 hours were critical to her survival. Meanwhile, Patrick started making calls. All across the country and even overseas, people were lifting Ariella up in prayer. We were getting these prophetic words from people. And yes, with every one that I received, I would read it out loud and read it to my wife and to anyone that was in the room. It did increase my faith. It kind of makes you feel like I'm not in this alone. And you feel the prayers and the love of brothers and sisters in Christ. And, you know, this is what the church is called to do. We're called to lift one another up in prayer in our time of need. 
Nurse Hartland noticed something different about Pat and Nora. Normally, parents are frantic, and it shows. There's no mindfulness or peacefulness. They're just very frantic and very scattered and uncontrollable emotions. But it was almost like they knew that she's in God's hands, and there was a, that kind of peace that was surrounding them. Overnight and into the next day, people prayed, believing God's promise for a miracle, including Pat and Nora's home church. And Lord, we lift Ariella before you to declare and declare that the healing you purchased for her 2,000 years ago is now being manifest in her body. She shall live and not die and proclaim the word of the Lord. By that evening, Ariella's seizures had stopped and the brain swelling was going down. But doctors cautioned about her recovery. Most physicians would say that she's either going to be brain dead or on a ventilator, needing a a feeding tube um, for the rest of her life. The prayers never stopped. And on the third day, Ariella opened her eyes. I was just like, I know my God is doing it. <laughs> He's doing it. I was just like, thank you, Jesus. There's no other explanation for it. In the evening of day three, the doctor was pretty bold and said that she believed that Ariella was going to be waking up as they took her off of the sedation uh, to be her normal self without any changes. And she did. Just four days after her accident, Ariella was released to go home. Nurse Hartland was coming into work as the family was leaving the hospital. I was flabbergasted, literally shocked that this little girl that had been in the unit just three or four days prior poor prognosis could make such a rapid turnaround in any capacity, but a turnaround that looked like this, where she was a completely normal 16-month-old. Um, it was God. <laughs> There's just no other way to, it was a miracle. Today, Ariella enjoys helping around the house. She's a normal, healthy little girl with no issues from the accident. Ariella would not be here without prayer. There's no way. I believe we just petitioned heaven so mightily that the Lord saw the grief. He saw our grief and our desperation, and he answered the prayer. But for me, it deepened my faith to say that, Lord, if you can do this, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard for you. God does still answer prayer. He still delivers people. As tragic as these things are, as, as difficult and as heavy as they are, God answers prayer. That happens to be one of the most frightening things that can ever happen to you, to see your child laying face down and uh, having to call the paramedics three days without uh, any sign that she's going to come through. But that's when prayer kicks in, you know, when, when you feel like you're at the end of your rope. That's when the, uh, the opportunity to reach out to those around you, especially to the church, begins to now answer that call. You wonder, uh, can I be healed? Uh, will I see what Nora saw? Yes, you can. You really can. And I believe that's why God called you to tune into this program today for such a time as this. You know, I, as I was listening to that, I, I, I heard God does still answer prayer, and he, he still delivers people. He really does. I know I've been delivered many times and still being delivered, and it, it, there's not a day that goes by that I don't need prayer and people to agree with me. I want to get something into your hands, but I have a, a Bible verse for you as well that I believe is going to help you. Can I be healed? You absolutely can be healed. We believe that. We believe that Jesus speaks today. I believe in the miracle of healing, uh, divine healing, and also uh, the healing prayer. Now, the two of those, one immediately takes away whatever the symptoms are. The other one, the symptoms leave, and over time, you'll see the breakthrough. But I want you to hold on to this word. And it says this in Jeremiah the prophet in verse 17 of chapter 30. For I will restore health to you, says the Lord, because they called you outcasts, saying, This is Zion. No one seeks her. 
God seeking you. Why don't you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I know that someone, they've been having an inner ear ringing and they've been wondering what it is, that right ear. I thank you that it's being healed and opened right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for sending your word in Jesus' name. If that's you, one 855 700 Prayer partners are standing by. Say, Pastor B, it was me. Up next, panic attacks, what causes them, and how you can avoid them. The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body, but on each side of him was a huge angel. He seemed to just emerge through the door and floated out on, on the ground. She started pointing and she was saying monster. Discover the truth in Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. In this DVD, you'll gain biblical insight into these mysterious creatures. Learn their purpose in God's kingdom and their role in your life. Plus, meet people who've had real encounters with angels. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. You're going to be a believer by the time this is finished. Call now to get your copy of Angels. Available now. Andrea Garrett is one of the two and a half million adults who knows firsthand the terror of a panic attack. Came out of a sound sleep, uh, had chest pains and uh, shortness of breath and uh, heart was racing and just felt like I was dying, felt like I was having a heart attack. And, I, and initially I thought I was having a heart attack. I almost called 911 and went to the hospital to get checked out. What hap ended up happening is that after about 10 or 15 minutes, the symptoms began to slowly subside, and then I was able in a little while to go back to bed, go back to sleep. Andrea's experience was typical, according to Dr. Matthew Angelelli, a psychiatrist who specializes in panic attacks. When we're children, uh, our parents teach us how to cope with things. Uh, parents do the best they can. Uh, sometimes the problems we're presented with uh, are, uh, overwhelm our ability to cope. My father had passed away not long before, and there were some changes in my job and some ch just some life changes that were pretty significant. In addition to current life changes like a divorce or a new baby, panic attacks can also be triggered by memories of past stress, such as child abuse. Sometimes when stressors are going on, you have to put them aside so that you can take care of the business at hand, and then um, the anxiety builds because you never dealt with it and then you um, start having panic attacks. But when you're having a panic attack, you are not thinking about what caused it. The only thing on your mind is the feeling of the attack itself. However, there are things you can do to talk yourself down from the ledge. Don't concentrate on the symptoms. Don't concentrate on you know the, the racing heart. Don't concentrate on the shortness of breath because it makes it worse. People who recognize they're having a panic attack if they just calm themselves down, if they just wait through it, it will calm down, usually fairly quickly, five minutes, at most 30 minutes. Uh, panic attacks do not lead to death. If you're having a panic attack or are with someone who is, some things that can help are a shower, physical activity, and focusing on soothing, positive thoughts. Read the Bible, read some Psalms that were comforting, pray. Uh, have my husband pray with me, and just long enough for it to subside and to pass and to, and to resolve itself. And uh, that, that usually worked. People who have panic attacks on a regular basis have what's known as panic disorder, which can lead to living in fear of having a panic attack, especially in public. People who um, have panic attacks that don't have prescriptions will start isolating, and they will start missing out on life. They will start missing out on family functions. They'll start missing out. They'll stop going to their work. They'll stop going to social functions, and then they may end up depressed. I did mention it to a doctor in passing. We weren't. I would, didn't go to the doctor for that. And um, the doctor asked a few more questions and suggested some medication that did help. And once I went on that, I never had another one. Medications used to treat panic attacks are often benzodiazepines, which act on the limbic system in the brain to calm neurons. 
They can be taken right before a specific situation, such as public speaking or flying, during a panic attack to stop it in its tracks, or as daily maintenance to prevent them from occurring at all. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. When you talk about do it afraid and you think about Nora seeing her daughter floating in a pool and uh, three days without yeah. any response, yeah. you know, sometimes fear, uh, if it's just us, is one thing, mm -hmm. but it, when it, it becomes Absolutely. our family, oh, it's big, it right? goes to another level, it doesn't it? It does go to another level. I mean, you and I have both been there, right? Oh, of course. And it's one thing to trust God for yourself, but yes. trusting God with your kids, yes. your grandkids, I mean, when tragedy strikes, yes. it's a test, really, isn't it? It's a test of our trust. Yes, and it's yeah. the ultimate exercising of your faith as well. Yes. You know, yeah. we want to pray with you and pray for you because in this, I, I found Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And if you're going to do it afraid, you're going to have to get beyond that crippling fear and say, God, I trust you. Let's touch and agree with that. Father, we thank you because I know that there are people that are dealing with health concerns and there are situations in their life, financial, that are much bigger than them. But I thank you that this giant comes down today because it's not too big to get over. It's just too big to miss. And now we turn it over to you by faith. And we thank you in advance, Lord, that you will not only carry them through, but you will get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, man. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been so encouraged just listening to what God is doing in your life, and I'm looking Aww. forward to spending more time with you. Thank you, Brian. Me too. Yes. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying that. We want to leave you with a power verse today, and we want you to stand on this. Isaiah 41.10, it says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. <laughs> Until next time, God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.